Welcome to the last part of section 1.2 notes. And this is on a topic that uh, I really enjoy and you will be seeing a lot of demonstrations uh, to try and get this concept into your brain. It's something that's likely that you've likely seen before and that is density. Now I don't know if you know what it means, you know what the definition is, um, you might have heard the term used, that thing was really dense or you're really dense or something like that. But when we think about den density, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And through the, the demonstrations you'll see in class and hopefully this little podcast, we'll have a feel for what's going on. And then we're going to start calculating uh, density with some values of mass and volume that we have for various objects. So let's look at, first at the, the definition, the easiest definition of density, and that is the ratio of mass to volume. Now some people like to call it uh, the compactedness. I don't even know if that's a word. How compact something is, uh, how I've had students say how thick it is. That doesn't quite work. Uh, some people will say how heavy it is. Uh, that also doesn't work. Because when you look at density, the two things that have to be there are whatever the mass is of the object and the volume of the object. And so imagine two things that are very similar. All right, Let's just pretend uh, there are two cubes here. And they're full of stuff. Okay. Right, and they're full of stuff. Okay, now this one weighs 10 grams. This one, which is the same size, let's just pretend that I drew two two similar things, but this one weighs 20 grams. Right. So what we have here is we have the same volume, but one weighs more. What's the only way it could weigh more? Well, inside this uh, thing there are more atoms and molecules per unit space. Whereas, let's say if we could do a visual of this, maybe the atoms and molecules in the same space are a little more spaced out. Okay, So this object right here is more dense. It has more mass for the same volume. And so it is a denser object. Now let's look at another thing. Let's look at two different things. Uh, I've got this this item, let's say I've got a, a, a rock, and uh, it weighs 10 grams, and I have this really large cylinder, okay? Pretend it's a cylinder. I know my drawing is horrible, okay? And it also weighs 10 grams, okay? Now, again, this shows you why density does not have to do with just weight and why it doesn't have to do with just volume, because both of those objects weigh the same amount. However, one is quite a bit smaller than the other. How is it smaller? Well, inside there, again, there must be more atoms and molecules. It's really compact in here. All right? Whereas this one has some space. And this kind of goes along the lines of uh, which weighs more, a ton of feathers or a ton of rock. And a lot of people will say rock, but they're not paying attention to the fact that a ton weighs 2,000 pounds. Okay? And if you think about the mass, they weigh the same, but who's going to take up so much more space? The feathers are going to take up a lot more space. Okay? So density is this property that objects have that involves how much they weigh, their mass, and how much space they take up, their volume. And so we want to look at it because it's a super useful property. In fact, it's a property that you can use to solve a number of problems if you don't know the identity of an object. In fact, there's a story about uh, Archimedes. A king called him uh, to his court and said, hey, I need to know if this crown is real. You know, is it real gold? Well, Archimedes went ahead and found the density and found that, in fact, it wasn't gold and so I imagine the guy that gave the king the crown was punished some way. But let's go back to how we can use this in chemistry. Okay, Look at this chart right here. This is right from your book. And notice the density is up here. And the reason it's at 25 degrees Celsius, we're trying to keep a 
constant this is the state of it at, at this temperature okay well look at all these things and you can see it goes from the smallest number on to the biggest number here's the densest element out there osmium 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter where hydrogen gas the lightest element known look at that okay and so we can use these let's say I gave you an object and you didn't know what its density was but you could weigh it and you could find its volume well if you could somehow calculate the density you could figure out exactly which one of these objects it was okay but to do that we got to look at our density formula okay now here's the formula for density all we do is we take the mass over the volume right now the units for mass is grams and the unit for volume is usually cubic centimeters okay but since we're going to be using liquids a lot of times to find the density of objects you'll also see a common volume of milliliters all right and this kind of brings me to one conversion factor that's on our sheet I just want to remind you okay one cubic centimeter in volume equals one milliliter okay that's something you want to make sure you have in your notebook because that's an important conversion factor but if you see cubic centimeters or you see milliliters don't let it bother you just know that they're equivalent right so here we have this formula the mass by the volume so let me kinda let me give you just a simple example of what it would look like if we were to calculate a problem like this let me erase my spectacular art all right let's say for example I had this object okay there's my object and I put it on the scale and it weighed uh, 10.5 grams okay and because it's a an object that's a little uh, oblong or whatever it's just uh, it's an object that's not easily measured length with the height I put it in a graduate cylinder okay pretend that's a graduate cylinder and I dump it in there and the water level goes from here and then when I dump the rock in there it goes up to here and so the volume changed uh, 3.95 milliliters all right what would be the density of that object well I'm gonna use my formula D equals M over V right and I'm just gonna plug the numbers in the mass is 10.5 grams the volume is 3.95 milliliters okay so pardon me I didn't have this done I should have done this 10.5 3.95 and I get my calculator says this 2.6582 the unit is grams per milliliter but wait a minute what do we always worry about when we're doing math well we always worry about significant figures right how many do I have there three how many do I have there three I've got to have three significant figures I'm cutting off an eight so what do I do I better round it up right so 2.65 grams per milliliter and that's a density problem I know you've seen this somewhere before hopefully it's not too new but let's practice a few problems uh, and then uh, next time we're in class you're gonna see some demos to try and get this compactedness definition into your brain and um, and then we'll do a little bit more math with it so I've got a couple practice problems here's one over here okay pause the video try to do this problem and see what you get all right, did you do that? If you got 2.70 um, grams per cubic centimeter, okay, you were right. So let me work this out. Please write the formula. I always write the formula. It helps me make, it from, make little mistakes. Keeps me from making little mistakes. Okay, so my mass, I find the unit grams, right? Sometimes story problems are hard. Okay, although it does tell you what the mass is, but if you can't pull the information out, just look for grams, right? We know that grams is a mass. What's the volume? 13.0 uh, cubic centimeters, and so that equals 2.70. All right. Oops, what am I doing? Let's drive that, write that unit, grams per cubic centimeter. Now, here's a question up here. What, which metal is this? Well, good thing I have that chart, right? So let's look at the chart. Okay, find which one of those 
metals this was. Did you find it? Okay, right there. Look at the density. Aluminum, 2.699. I would say that's pretty darn close to 2.70, right? So there's our first density problem. I hope you got it right. Let's try another one. If you're rolling through this, just enjoy the ride and enjoy the fact that you're just cranking this out. Here's another one. Okay, again, pause the video, try this, see if you get the right answer. All right, did you get 5.44 cubic centimeters? If you did, pat yourself on the back. If not, just watch how we did it. Okay, again, like always, I'm going to write out the, the density formula. Okay, but look what we're solving for. We're solving for the volume up here, right? So V's on the bottom. The first thing I want to do is get V over there, right? So I'm going to times both sides by V. Okay, now I get V times D equals M. How do I get the D on the other side? Well, I divide both sides by D, right? And so my, the formula that I use is M over D equals V. Now I know some of your math teachers don't make you rearrange and you can do it however you want as long as you're getting it right. But if you're missing them, I'm going to look for you to rearrange these equations. And just another little math trick, if you ever see two variables on opposite sides of the equal sign, one's on top like the D is here and one's on bottom like the V is, the easy way to rearrange them is to go ahead and just flip them. Just take the take this V, put it over here. Take that D, put it over there. All right. So that being said, let's go ahead and work out this last problem. Okay. So I, now that I've got my formula, I can just plug in the numbers. V equals m over D. Right. All right. So my mass. Which one is it? It's the one with grams, right? Because we know that mass is always measured in grams. So I've got 123 grams divided by 220, pardon me, 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter, right? And when you're all done, oh, here it is. It's way over here. It leaves you with this answer, okay? Look at what happens to the units. Grams on bottom, grams on top, they cancel. Now I get 1 over 1 over cubic centimeters. That's a reciprocal from your math days. That puts it on top. And there is your volume. All right. Hopefully this is making a little sense. Don't panic if it doesn't because we will practice a lot of these. Now I've got one more thing to show you um, that sometimes is very helpful for students who just, they just don't have a good feel for converting units. Okay, I call this the density pyramid. And you're laughing like, what? But let me look, let me show you how it works. Whatever unit you have to solve for, cover it up. All right, so for example, if I were to cover up the D right here, look what the formula is, M over V. If I'm solving for volume, cover it up, right? What's the formula for volume? M over D. Whoa, this is really handy, isn't it? What if I want to find the mass? Cover the mass up. D times V. The density pyramid. So write that in your journal if you want to. It's sometimes useful if you don't want to go through all the steps of rearranging. The important thing is that you can do the problems. All right? And uh, we'll practice these in class quite a bit. Hopefully this made a little bit of sense. And if not, just uh, talk to me when I see you uh, in class. See you next time.